Hello David and Joan. So this is Ted and I'll show you how to mount one of these. Uh, very easy, very easy to do. Um, here's the here's the uh, track. Underneath you see that I've epoxied in place these two, uh, the two nuts. And all we need to do is basically mark the position of these uh, these nuts um, on, on the um, existing base of the receiver which uh, I've drilled already but yours won't have these two holes in it um, on the bottom of the underneath here you'll feel that there's a thicker part of the casting and that's where you want to drill through and you'll also find that if you hold this piece of track underneath you're able to slide it um, backwards a little bit it'll touch uh, the side of the casting but if you bring it out too much then you'll be off the thicker part of the casting so there's a there's a sweet spot in there about about an eighth eighth of an inch away from the back and that's where you want to uh, align your holes so what you do is get it pretty much aligned and then just bring that out like this and uh, set it on top now what you want to be is uh, if you're looking vertically down here you want to be about a sixteenth of an inch you want, you want to have about a sixteenth of an inch clearance um, looking straight down between this edge of the uh, receiver and the edge of the blue track. That will also give you uh, enough clearance back inside here that when you put the thing underneath it won't bump against this large thick part of the casting. So find a good spot and then uh, take a, either a nail that's slightly that's just the right size as the holes or a 7 64th inch drill bit and um, manually um, mark on the black uh, anodized uh, or painted aluminum mark these two holes by just spinning this or tapping the nail gently or whatever and when you uh, when you pull it away you'll have you'll have your two holes marked now uh, drill these out with a a bit that uh, I'll have to I'll send you an email with the size of that bit I'm not quite sure how big it'll be but it's quite soft aluminum uh, you can drill it out by hand, try to make sure it's nice and straight, and then uh, countersink out the um, countersink out the holes until the two uh, number six by thirty-two three-quarter inch screws drop in and and become flush with the surface, so that they won't interfere with the dovetails for your telescopes. Um, that's it at that point. Uh, you'll simply uh, place the uh, piece of track underneath, find a place to get the two screws started, and tighten it up, and you're, uh, you're ready to go. That's it. Now you have, the, uh, you have that lever arm as well. Uh, so yeah, as far as the other end goes, just take uh, one of your one of these contraptions here, uns unscrew this end until it just comes to the edge. I've peened it over so you can't lose it, and uh, slide that into the end. Slide that into the end here, uh, about an inch or so. Tighten it up against the bottom. Well, and then uh, I guess the at that point, you're and then at this point, sorry for the stopping the video. Uh, at this point, you would just um, unclip this from the hook here, put it over one leg like this, clip it back on, and uh, you know, you know, all set with the amount of restoring force that you need. Um, if you have uh, too, too much restoring force for the weight of the telescope, just loosen this and slide it in so that you get less restoring force on the scope. But I've found that for the ST120s, having it out here is a pretty good, pretty good spot. Um, try to keep these two screws fairly tight, although not, not too tight, they're just stainless steel, but snug them up pretty good so things don't move around and you should be all set to go
Um, oh, one more thing for disassembling the scope for travel, the amount for travel. I found that the simplest way is to remove the three screws uh, around the three screws around the edges here, rather than the one big screw in the middle, to pop the head off the mount the tripod. The uh, screw in the middle, when you unscrew that, you end up with some grease on your hands. But the three screws around the edges uh, are, are very uh, well positioned, and they uh, they release it freely. Uh, just bring a, an Allen wrench along and tighten them back up when you're done, and you'll you'll uh, be able to pack the scope up in a bit smaller uh, space. That's about it. Hi again. One more thing I forgot. I was going to show you the this uh, packing process. Uh, this suitcase came straight from Walmart. I, I can't tell you exactly um, where uh, what brand it is or anything, but you can see the the configuration of the, the handle. It's an expandable suitcase. It's got wheels. It's got an, this handle comes out so you can pull it. It's kind of nice. Um, so I'll open it up and show you how this goes for packing. So I've used these, as you saw, use these uh, signs from some guy who was running for office a couple of years ago uh, to hold things in. They're very convenient. So the, the uh, got, a, got a sign on this, just like you always put on your stuff here to tell the TSA to hands off. Um, and I like I like using this because by tucking this into this into the corners here. And then um, actually zippering down this little holder, it actually provides a, a little more surface to keep the scopes in there nice. And, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that I put a piece of, of green uh, material um, over this, a very thin piece, a one inch, one inch thick piece of uh, material over that. So here's the four scopes. And what, I ha what you have to do to get them to fit is to, is to take off the... Uh, take off the, the dew shield here and I wouldn't even you're not even going to bring those with you you're going to make those out of cardboard anyway and unscrew the the uh, reducer here on the back from the back of the scope as well tighten up these screws nicely wrap it up in some foam material and then stick it in here what I've done here is made uh, made some customized uh, dividers by just taking a piece of uh, two and it's probably three inch foam and uh, slicing down the sides of the foam um, I uh, what I use to slice it I use uh, these these long razor blades come in this tube and they're designed to fit a window scraper it looks like this they're about four inches long. So you can uh, you can uh, grab one of these and and easily uh, you can manually uh, carve out these uh, sections from foam. Uh, I like these uh, I like these a lot. They're nice and long. About four and a half inches long and they do a good job. So I'll make a couple of those, make three of those. Uh, they go in here, divide the scopes up. I'll zoom in a little bit on this. And uh, some, I've got one inch of green foam underneath. These guys in the middle, one inch of green foam on top. Then uh, hold this down. Um, in the top part of the suitcase here, I have I have stored the four I have stored in here the four uh, dew shields uh, you know you won't travel with those but this is a good place uh, until you get to the weight limit of 50 pounds or whatever you have this is a good place to store pieces of mount I've got I got some mount uh, some mount uh, tripod uh, stuff in there the 120 tripods which you won't be using you'll be using the smaller ones 
but this uh, at the moment this telescope is way this uh, suitcase is way over 50 pounds uh, I wouldn't uh, so you're gonna have to experiment with what you can get in there but you can take the mount heads off your AZ4 mounts and put them in there wrapped in bubble wrap and so on until you get to the uh, into there. You can put some clothing in anything that's light just to get it up to 50 pounds and it uh, survives uh, survives the trip very well uh, I've shipped it twice and no problem with any of the scopes and just reassemble it. Oh, I do I do uh, blue I do tape the dust cap loosely onto the front of the telescopes for protection here uh, you can see even though it without the dew shield it's not a tight fit I tape it on with some blue painters tape and that, that just keeps the front end of the scope uh, protected and the, the, the primary objective uh, then zip it all back up and you should be ready to go uh, this uh, all this green material is available from Joann's Fabrics it's fairly expensive but with some one inch and, and some three inch you should be in, in good shape. Good luck!